Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on X Twitter at Movies TV Mad and on Instagram and on Freds at Movies TV Mad X. Every day on X Twitter and Freds and Instagram, there's a Movies TV Mad daily bite size lasting for around four minutes. Then we'll talk about the same subject matter with an extended 30 minute video the following day here on YouTube. So you get the news, a little bit bite-sized, on the day, on Instagram, X, and Freds, but then you get the full, full 30-minute video on YouTube. But what is this? What is going on, everyone? Nathan Fillon, you really put the cat amongst the pigeon for your good friend, James Gunn, by saying that you got offered the Guy Gardner Superman gig during the Suicide Squad rap party, premiere party, whatever it was. And James Gunn's been digging himself a deeper and deeper grave by over elaborating on this and denying this and correcting you on what may or may not have happened. James Gunn shuts down conspiracy theory about Henry Cavill's DCEU exit. Now, I'm going to read this to you because I think it's very important and very interesting why the trades like Deadline and Variety are doing an article about this. I can tell you why. It's because they are the left and right arm of studios. And it's clear that WB must be very worried about this developing situation because they're gambling everything on James Gunn's Superman movie and whatever crap comes out about the past it doesn't mean James Gunn isn't going to make a great Superman movie we don't know if it's going to be great as I always say but one thing has nothing to do with the other and it's all in the past of course but instead of keeping quiet zipping his mouth and getting on with his job he's over elaborating on this situation which makes me suspect that yeah, he's being very economical with the truth. Don't forget that James said during the, you know, during the, you know, promotion on, you know, the marketing run of the Suicide Squad, he had no intention of replacing Walter Hamada. Replacing Walter Hamada is exactly what he did. This is an untruth. Now, was he offered the gig at that time when he said that? Or was it offered later on? He said, I wouldn't have done it if Peter Saffron wasn't getting involved with running it with me. That's neither here nor there. You said you wasn't interested in running DC, which is basically a lie, because clearly you were interested in running DC anyway. Let's read this, because it's very interesting. James Gunn is shutting down a fan conspiracy theory that he always planned to remove Henry Cavill from the DCEU. Amid the shooting of the new Superman film and the second season of Peacemaker, Gunn finds time to answer fan inquiries on social media. He's on social media far too much. I love interaction with fans. He's interacted with me before. It's a good thing, but there could be too much of a good thing. A fan shared a quote from Nathan Fillon about how he found out he was cast as Green Lantern in the new DC film, which will be released in 2025. We were actually at the premiere party after Suicide Squad and he, Gunn, was in a, a huge crowd of people and Fillon said in an interview with Collider, he goes, hey, did Peter Safran tell you what we've got for you next? I said, no, he hasn't said he looked around like someone was going to be listening. We were in the we were in the front of people, but he leaned over and said, "You're going to be Guy Gardner." Now, this is something that Phil on Sen happened during the Suicide Squad premiere party. But Mick, you spoke about this last week. Why are you speaking about it again? Because the trades have got hold of it, which means this probably isn't very far from the truth. Now, Nathan Fillon seems like a very level-headed guy. I don't think Nathan Fillon makes a mistake like this. Anyway, and Nathan hasn't come out to clarify or correct anything either, which is very, very interesting, because he doesn't want to get involved with this. You know, it's, it's very, very messy. But as I say, it is in the past. But anyway, so let's, I've lost my space now, but where, where are we? Right, so... 
DC fan, hang on, DC fans took Philon's word as Gunn already working on the reboot of the DCEU since the release of the Suicide Squad in 2021. More than a year before he and Peter Safran were named co-CEOs of DC Studios in October 2022. Now officially there was no DC Studios there, but he was going to be writing this, this Superman movie, right? He, you know, Toby Emmerich and, and Hamada asked him when he first came in to write a Superman movie. Now, when I spoke about this last week, I, I said to you that James said he was offered, he was asked to do a Superman script. He said, no, he wanted to do Suicide Squad. I believe he was told, unless you agree to do the Superman script, which he wasn't directing at the time, you wouldn't get the Suicide Squad. It's the same situation as Joss Whedon. You know, again, the same people said to Joss Whedon, we need you to be our Victor Fleming. We need you to save this Justice League movie and you can get your dream gig, which is Batgirl. He didn't save the Justice League movie. It was a flop. He didn't get Batgirl. And I think they were repeating. You know, it's a level of madness to repeat your mistakes. They brought in Gunn and not made him the same offer. They made Whedon a few years earlier. However, Gunn clarified on Fred's that Phil and Miss spoke, which meant he found out about his Green Lantern casting during the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 premiere party. Of course, this could be true. But, I'm sorry James, I'm not going to take you at your word. I like you as a director, you seem like a really nice guy, and all of that, as nice as people in this industry can be, but I don't think Nathan makes a mistake like this, and you have been caught out in half-truths before as well. Anyway, Gunn went on to clarify the rumour that he always intended to replace Cavill as Superman since he helmed the Suicide Squad. I don't quite understand how that fits, he shared on Fred's, aside from the fact that I had no interest in running DC until Peter decided to do it with me. So, he's saying, because he said at the time he had no intention of running DC. So... You had no intention of running DC. You said you had no intention of running DC because Peter Saffron was going to run it with you. That's why he wanted to do it. Well, I suppose he didn't want to run it on his own. He didn't want to be a producer. He wanted to be a. He wanted to run the creative leadership. And we spoke about this the other day. How I don't like the idea of a one vision, a one man vision of DC, because it doesn't give any other opportunities to any other visions. Anyway. So, yeah, until Peter decided to do it with me. So he could do the exec stuff, and I could focus on creative. Yeah, that's what he wanted to do. When I was hired to write Superman, it was always intended as and pitched as a new Superman story. We'll get into the Cavill timetable, by the way. So why would I lie about not planning that at the Suicide Squad premiere, which would have amounted to the same thing at the end of the day? How does this particular conspiracy theory make sense? When people from the entertainment industry and people of the ideology from the entertainment industry want to make us seem like mad people who are just screaming in the dark, they call us conspiracy theorists. We heard this phrase during the COVID pandemic. Every time they say truths, they throw the term conspiracy theory. Just like, you know, the Kennedy assassination conspiracy theory, of course, it's more realistic that a magic bullet made all those wounds rather than there being more than one assassin. So we were all conspiracy theorists, including, you know, you know, director, writer, director Oliver Stone. We now know that most probably either Lee Harvey Oswald was one of many assassins or he didn't even shoot Kennedy. I'm just giving you, you know, why they use the term conspiracy theory anyway so for, i had no interest in running dc until peter decided to do it with me so he could do the exact stuff and i could focus on the creative when i was hired to write superman it was always intended as a, a and pitched as a new superman story so why would i lie about not planning that at the squad premiere which would have amounted to the same thing at the end of the day how does this particular conspiracy right so we've done that Amid the DC Studios executive shakeup, Cavill reprised his role as Superman in an end credit scene from 2022's Black Adam. However, when Gunn and Saffron took over DC and planned to reboot 
the universe, they announced they would be recasting Superman. So let me ask you this, right? This is very interesting. Considering he said his Superman was always supposed to be a brand new Superman, and he was developing that script, basically he was told to develop a Superman script even before they gave him the green light to do Suicide Squad. If that's the case, why did Cavill come back? Why did he do the post credit scene? Because obviously James's movie was before he was running DC, maybe going to be, you know, a separate Elseworld movie, maybe. Don't forget there was another Elseworld movie in development, the J.J. Abrams and Ashley Coates Black Superman as well. So you were planning this before the post credit scene. So what? So was Henry Cavill going to still be Superman in one universe? And you were going to have, we we're going to have two other different Supermans in other universes. It doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really compute, does it? David Cornsworth was cast as the new Superman with filming already underway. The film also stars Blah. Yeah, we don't care about that. So, basically, the reason I'm talking about this today is because it's hit the trades. And if something hits the trades, it's normally because the studio want to change the narrative around it. We all know nobody believes access entertainment media. Nobody believes anything that, you know, mainstream media say any, any, anymore, let alone about the entertainment industry. So let me take you back to the Henry Cavill timetable so we can clear the mist on this situation. So, in, in 2017, they released Justice League and it was an absolute mess and they made Henry look like a clown with the upper lip CGI. It was terrible. It was a terrible Justice League movie. It flopped. It was horrible. We all investigated. Zack Snyder helped us with some information and we worked out what they did to Snyder. That's a different subject. Now, in 2018, Henry Cavill ha had pitched with his um, Mission Impossible Fallout director, a new idea, a new concept for a Man of Steel kind of sequel movie. Straight off the bat, Warner Brothers said no. I believe once they refused Henry's pitch, he either quit or they fired him. Because not long after, because in the same year, not long after he made that pitch, THR, the Hollywood Reporter, had an exclusive article from, I think, Boris King, saying that WB... Warner Brothers Pictures were resting, shelving Superman. They were going to give Superman a break. Very, very interesting. Because we went from giving Superman a break to Tanashi Coates and J.J. Abrams' Superman. And then when they brought in Gunn, when he was temporarily fired from Disney, as I'm saying to you, they said to him, we want you to write a Superman script. If you agree, you can do whatever else you want beforehand and this is exactly what happened but Gunn's explanation was they asked me to do Superman I said no and then I did the Suicide Squad I chose that over Superman and you've been all cock of the north I rejected Superman blah 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 but the reality is he agreed to do that Superman script and as he's already said Henry Cavill was never ever going to be his Superman now listen as I say, it's in the past. This has no bearing whether his Superman film is good or not. For example, a fan was querying why, you know, he's taking, you know, he's gonna, the movie's taking around six months to do its principal photography. And the fan goes, oh, I'm concerned about this. Is this because you're going to have so much, too much CGI? He goes, it's not a long shoot. And, and James correctly corrected this fan. This is, I'm balanced. I speak the truth. And says this is actually one of the longest shoots I've ever had, probably the longest, and this is true. These days, your average principal photography schedule runs around from around three to four to four and a half months. They're not very long because half the time is principal photography on location and on set. The other three, three, four, whatever months, right? Well, it's a bit longer than that, obviously. But they're pressing buttons with editing, um, with CGI. And that's why the movies don't take that long to make. This is, and you know, this is actually very, very positive that this is one of the longest shoots we've had in recent years for a superhero movie. It means it's going to be a longish movie. And it also means that James is attempting to do as much as possible 
in camera without CGI. This is a good thing. This is a positive move. That is not a negative thing. But going back to this, so they fired or Henry quit being Superman in 2018. He was no longer Superman. Then, you know, when Abby and DeLuca came in, all of a sudden Black Adam was happening. They knew that Black Adam was going to flop and they needed a hook. All of a sudden, Henry Cavill was in the post credit scene. You know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson always wanted Henry Cavill's Superman involved. So he's in the post credit scene. Not long after that came out, Henry's on his Instagram saying, the secret's out, I'm back as Superman. Then, you know, The Rock was talking about uh, a movie um, between, you know, a Superman versus Black Adam movie and things like that. And all the possibilities we could have. And we were all getting very, very excited. I didn't see any red flags here at this point. So this was before Gunn was officially taking over at DC Studios. So then when James Gunn took over, uh, Henry Cavill was in an interview and he said, I look forward to talking to James Gunn about my Superman and the next step for my Superman. Because we knew he was writing a Superman movie. Henry knew he was writing a Superman movie. But when Henry said that, I thought to myself, you've got little chance of being involved in his Superman movie. And I was correct. I was correct. I saw the red flag with that because I knew he wasn't going to use Henry Cavill as Superman. But here's the real truth. I don't think not using Cavill is really that much his decision. I think it's a studio decision. And it's clearly he didn't want Cavill as his Superman. But if the studio says you have to use Cavill, then he would have had to have used him used Cavill. It, it, you know, I don't think this is a James Gunn thing. I think this is a Warner Brothers thing. Because by that time, the, you know, certain figures, you know, because you've got Abby and DeLuca who wanted to bring Cavill back and The Rock wanted to bring Cavill back. But there's elements still there, like Toby Emmerich, who's still at Warner Brothers, hiding away somewhere. He never left. Don't forget Zaslav gave him his own little production company, which had an automatic exclusive deal with Warner Brothers Pictures, right? So he's still there. That's the timetable. It's very messy. It's very, very dirty. But there you have it. So is James Gunn a liar? I'll let you decide that. But he has been caught out in several untruths before. And the more you over elaborate and deny something, because you could keep quiet about it, you know, is there any point in him coming out? Does anyone believe him anymore when he says, well, this, I don't understand how this can be true. Why would I do this? Why would I do that? Because it's all utterly messy and suspicious and it's dirty. It's a dirty situation. Henry Cavill wasn't treated very, very well, but Here's the situation. This is why fans are mad. It's not about Snyder. It's not about anything. We were told Henry was coming back. We were lied to. You put him in a post credit scene. And yes, Henry probably knew none of this was actually going to happen. Because I, don't, I can't see of any other scenario but Cavill knowing as well. I don't have any issue with Henry. Henry's an actor. He does as he's told. But there's no question we were lied to. They never had any intention in bringing Henry Cavill back. It was all about trying to uplift the box office of Black Adam, as I said on record, when all this kicked off. So they lied to us. They put him in a post credit scene. They could have put him in a post credit scene and not said anything else. But they felt the post credit scene wasn't enough to uplift the box office. So they got Cavill to go on his Instagram and say, He's coming back to try and get more interest in Black Adam. And I don't even think that worked. Well, it was a flop. It did okay, but it was a flop. The movie was very, very expensive to make. It didn't make the money. But that, and that had to come from Zasla. That had to be a desperate attempt to try and get more people to watch that movie. And this is why people are angry with James Gunn. This is why people are angry with Zasla. We were told... He was coming back. We were excited.
They were talking about the potential. They were telling people on their official social media account to go and buy a Man of Steel, stream Man of Steel as well, because Henry's coming back. They lied to us. So you can understand why people are angry. But how much of that is James Gunn's fault? Well, he came in and he didn't want to use it, even though we were told he was coming back. So I can understand why fans are upset. I've always said I understand why the guy wanted to, his own man. I get that. I understand that. I think half of it is him and half of it is different leaderships behind the scenes at WB. But the reason fans are angry, James, if you don't understand, then you really don't understand people. If you don't understand people, you shouldn't be making films, by the way. You know, we were lied to. <coughs> Sorry about that, but I've got a frog in my throat. We were lied to. That's why people are angry. I'm still angry, but I can put my anger to one side and say, look, James is making a Superman film. I hope it's going to be great. I love Superman. I want it to be great. But this is why people are angry. And you've got to understand why people are angry. We were lied to. If they never put him in that post credit scene, if they never, you know, had him telling us he was coming back and have The Rock talk about a potential Black Adam versus Superman movie. All very, very exciting things. These were all lies. These were all untruths to get everyone to embrace Black Adam and go and see Black Adam because nobody fucking asked for a Black Adam movie. Black Adam is a Shazam villain. He should have been in a bloody Shazam movie. And because The Rock wanted his own movie, and I don't mind Black Adam, I quite enjoy it, but still, it was never going to be the film that people embraced. The Rock was wrong not to not want to be part of the Shazam movies. That's where we lost out. That's where Shazam fans lost out as well. I'll go even deeper. Maybe The Rock should never have played Black Adam. Another conversation for another time. So James Gunn, this is why people are very, very upset. Because we were told he was coming back and fans believe he was never coming back and the intention was to make your Superman a central universe Superman. Because here's the thing as well, Hamada was planning this Flashpoint, this reboot thing. He, you know, James has used the Flash to reboot DC into DC Universe, right? Now Hamada was looking to do a similar thing with the DCEU, but it'll still be the DCEU, but it'll be a Flashpoint DCEU, with no Superman in the DCEU, no Affleck Batman in the DCEU, Michael Keaton instead of Ben Affleck, things like that. So there are similarities between the Hamada plan and the gun plan. And I've said, I've called that out as, you know, as a red flag before as well. So this is why fans are angry. This is why fans continue to go at you. And, you know, we didn't tell Nathan Fillon to do this, to say what he said. He came out and said it. Now, I think it's interesting. You know, I don't think you mistake the Suicide Squad party, premier party, rap party, whatever, for the, you know, you don't, if you're right at the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 party and you're offered a gig, you're told a secret by your director, your friend, you're going to remember that it's Guardians of the Galaxy. I think it was absolutely, he was told he was being cast as Guy Gardner during the Suicide Squad rap party. I believe this is true. I believe that he hasn't, you know, he, ha you know, he hasn't got it wrong. It's not a mistake. That's why you're not hearing any clarification from him. Because he's not willing to get involved with these untruths, with these lies. Nathan Fillon, as far as I'm concerned, is a clear-headed guy who wouldn't make such a mistake. He was offered the Guy Gardner job, as far as I'm concerned, during the Suicide Squad premiere party, as he said. James Gunn has been developing this Superman film before he officially became co-CEO of DC Studios. Now the question is, how long did he know that he and Saffron would be running DC Studios. Officially, we were told Dan Lim was interviewed to run that studio, and we even heard that Zaslav wanted Todd Phillips to run the studio. 
Would he have been running it with Dan Lin? I have no idea what these plans were. Now, we don't know, before Zaslav officially bought WB, if he'd already spoken to James Gunn about doing this. We don't know the timetables. We don't know the truth. And it's in the past. It matters, but it also doesn't matter because it's the past. You know, there's people constantly digging stuff up about James Gunn, hoping he gets fired. He ain't going to get fired unless Superman flops. That's the only way. It's about money. It's about success. That's how it should be. You know, so I'm willing to say, let's see James Gunn's movie. Let's see if it's any good. Let's see if it works. And I'm fine with that. All this stuff we're discussing, as I said on the top of the show, doesn't mean his Superman film is going to be bad, that he shouldn't be making a Superman film. Now, I've said, I've said a couple of videos ago that I wouldn't have chose him ever on a month, month of Sundays to write and direct a Superman film. He didn't want to direct this Superman film. He just wanted to write it. He was resistant to direct this movie, as we know. He said he wanted to think about it long and hard before he committed two years of his life on this movie. A movie necessarily, not necessarily something he was that invested in. They were kind of his words as well. He's not a big Superman guy. We know he's not a big Superman guy. He's trying to convince us that he is. Again, that doesn't mean he won't make a great movie. I'm not saying he shouldn't be making a Superman movie. I'm not saying his movie is going to be bad. I'm not saying I dislike him. But as a content creator, as I keep on saying to you, I've got to be balanced and honest about my opinion. I'm not just going to read the news to you and then say, see you later. I'm going to tell you what I think. That's why I'm talking about this today, because the trades are talking about it, which makes me very, very suspicious, which makes me feel WB and Zaslav are very, very nervous about this that's come out. Nathan Fillon has put his foot in it, basically. I believe what Nathan has said is accurate. I don't believe he made a mistake. But it's history now. Whatever happened, because we know those of us who have been following the DCEU and everything that's happening now with DC Studios know that Cavill was pretty much out as Superman from 2018. From that moment, they announced they were resting Superman. That is the biggest of fucking lies, isn't it? Because they weren't resting Superman. They brought in Gunn in 2021 when he was fired to start developing a Superman script because he was asked before he was allowed to do the Suicide Squad to do a Superman script. Do the Superman script, you get your Suicide Squad movie. If you say no, you don't. That's why he said yes. And suddenly it went from just writing a script to running DC with Peter Saffron and then directing the movie. He hesitated. He didn't want to direct this DC movie. He wasn't sure if he wanted to direct this Superman movie. He's pretty much said that himself. So what fans are accusing you of, James, isn't a conspiracy theory. It's not far from the truth. And if you're not willing to be honest, if the studio you work for doesn't want you to be honest about this, shut up and be a director. But the more you keep on denying the blatant, you know, what's clearly the truth. You're denying it. You're calling fans conspiracy theorists. Well, it may wash with your stands and your bots on social media, but it doesn't wash with me. I'm happy to embrace your movie. I'm excited about your movie. I really am. I'm a big Superman fan. It's nothing, to, one has nothing to do with the other. What this has to do with is integrity. And if you don't have any integrity, that's fine, because most of you in the entertainment industry don't have any integrity. But you talk down to us, your customers, when you've got no right to. Ricky Gervais was absolutely fucking right at the Golden Globes. And I'm glad he, you know, he exposed all of you for what you are. But if you're not willing to be honest, stop denying it. Keep your mouth shut because you're insulting the intelligence of the fans. And don't insult your customers' intelligence. We know the build-up to this movie has been dodgy. Ever since Snyder was removed, it's all been very, very unethical. 
and we all know that Henry Cavill was removed as Superman in 2018. Suddenly, he's on a post credit scene and he's coming back. He, let me say this as clearly and as slowly as possible, Henry Cavill was never returning as Superman 